I was hunting in Nevada on public land with uh, my friend Steve Rinella. We were uh, bow hunting mule deer. So we're in this area, and there's cows all over this area. Yeah. And these cows are all privately owned, and so they pay a, a grazing fee, I guess. There's, right. I don't know what the fee is. I don't know how that works. I don't, know if, I don't even know if they have to pay a fee. I don't know how that works. But the point is they have the, the rights to let their animals graze in a specific area, and then when it comes time to harvest them or whatever the fuck they do, they, they round them all up, mm. and the cowboys come in there. So like right. real cowboys, guys on horses. Yeah. It's fucking cool to watch. But that's – so like – they're all over the place. So there's those kind of ranchers. And then there's ranchers that have a contained ranch. So there's a lot of these out here in Texas. Yeah. Or like the guys at um, White Oaks Pastures, where they have a fully contained, managed ecosystem. And they have their cows out there. They will roam around. They use the manure. They use the manure for fertilizer. They recycle everything. It all goes back into nature, including the dead bodies of the animals and the, 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 the things that get harvested, the organs, everything. It's, everything gets used. So I think, I know, you know, I always go to, I always go, but you can't go back. When, when, when did it change and why did money. it change? It changed with money. No, but I'm saying like, say me, me and you, we're sitting there and we, you got your little tribe there and I got my tribe there and you know, yeah, man, you, you go hunting, you come back, and I'll make sure she'll get the steak or whatever. Everyone's helping each other out. You hunt, you gather and all that. When did... That's what always fascinates well, see, you. Like, gotta, you gotta, even that that time, like, and then we, even we're, we're romanticizing you, that time. I am that romanticizing. Time was but I one don't of know. the most fucking brutal times. You Opposed ever to that now? Show? Yes. You ever watch that show, 1883? Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's Taylor Sheridan's show. <laughs> up when, the ass. Oh my god, they killed everybody. They killed no. everybody. Mumra everybody Gaddafi. died. Yeah, <laughs> up the ass. But the, those people brutal. that were trying to make their way across the country, there's that's, that's brutal. It. That's the okay. knife up the ass. What's what's more brutal? You should see the video. This though. is this is this is what is more brutal? Oh, they did that, dude. They did that times a hundred. We've been right brutal here. forever. Forever. Human beings have been brutal forever. Forever. We just don't eat the the. We don't chimp it out though. We don't yet. We don't go but for if, the test. But we the, don't eat those. But if, you don't know, there might be some fucking, sickos out there. If the meteor hits, if the meteor hits, and we go back. We go back again because we've done it before. I guarantee we've done it before. I guarantee you, at least in parts of the world, uh. society has crumbled because of natural disasters and people resorted to barbarism. And I, I think that's the reason why, if you go further back in history, mm. people were the most ruthless. You know, if people really did exist in a very sophisticated way, which is what I believe, that it did exist somewhere around 11,800 uh, years ago and then before that. That's what I think. I think particularly in Africa. I think if you look at the structures that exist in Egypt, there's no doubt about it. Some of those are old as fuck, and I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they're older than they think they are, especially when you have geologists that are observing these deep water fissures, like Robert Schock, who's done this work on thousands of years of rainfall, must have created this, which is that, that pushes it back way to the point where there used to be rain in that area, which was like 9,000 years ago. So now we're in this area. Like, well, how old are these fucking things, man? <laughs> well, and I think if something happens yeah. and the, the world falls apart, I think only the monsters live. Only the monsters, only the the most psycho of psychos, only the, the most evil dog eat dog people, because they're probably cannibalizing. At a certain point in time, I bet people are cannibalizing. At a certain point of starvation, a certain point, if if there's like a nuclear winter, if like when those things impact and the fucking sky is covered with volcanic dust for <laughs> right, 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 for right, two right. years right. and nothing and you grows, you ain't got no guns and nothing. I guarantee people started eating people. I guarantee we are the Hunt each ancestors other? of people who ate people. I yeah, think so. I, I would I would buy that. Dude, the Comanche did it. Well, the Comanche didn't do it as much as some of the other Indians did it. But they, they would eat each other. They would eat their enemies. They would kill their enemy and eat his heart. They would do wild shit right here, the Nez Perce. Yeah. They would catch people and cook them and eat them in front of their friends. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I mean they did wild shit. Yeah, and they they did it for fun. They did it to torture people. Oh, they would torture people. That's why Native Americans had no concept of surrender. Like surrender, they're going to torture you and kill you one hundred percent. You got to fight to the death. Yeah, you but can't don't surrender. You, uh, would you? I think about this too. Like, would you, if you knew your entire existence was going to come to, if you felt like you know what? These guys, we've seen they've they've crushed it everywhere. There's no winning this. 
We fight to die or we become them. What are we doing? That's it. I can I always think about that with certain societies, even ours. We've never ever well, I can't say that. But have we come a time where you're willing to go, dude, we're not getting out of this one. Mumakita, we're not getting out of this one. So in the meantime, do we start taking out as you know, doing as much as we can? Like how do how do you I could see well, think that. about what the Native Americans went through in this country. That's what I'm saying. And I their their, their plight was even more dire because we removed their food. We removed the food. We we killed the buffalo. Right. So There's no independence anymore. They couldn't exist out there by themselves. Making them sick. Yeah, make Get them, them sick. sick and make take them that starve. Food. Yes. And then when the winter comes and you got no food, what the fuck are you gonna do? And then they offer you the reservation. And they they did that. They did that in this country. So there's your answer. Uh. The, the the and the way they treated those people is beyond evil. The way they converted them in those schools and that's that's also Bro. detailed in uh, nineteen twenty three, that show. I went to Saint Augustine and there's this fort down there. And as I'm walking through the fort, you know, people, you know, tourists just always walk by and look at all the pictures and the things like, oh, this fort's cool looking. And on the, on the wall is all these little Native American, little, little Indian kids just like traumatized, but in school outfits. And you see like, you know, the soldiers behind them. And I'm just, I sat there and watched it and went, Bro, can you ima can you imagine? Can you imagine how many kids you got? Three. Can you imagine seeing your children like completely indifferent, completely hostages for the rest of their life? And they watched their parents get taken out in front. Like they watched their mom's throat get slit or, or raping or burning them to, while they're alive. And now they're going to, dude, can you imagine like seeing that or living that as a child? And now that's what's going to control you the rest of your life? That's heavy, man. It is also heavy what the government did when they, they took gullible people and they gave them land where the Comanche were. Mm. They let them move in. That's S.C. Gwen's book, The mm. Empire of the Summer Moon. They just let these people build these homesteads. And then one day the Comanche came and just slaughtered everybody. And they mm. kidnapped people. The last Comanche chief was Quanah Parker, and his mother was Cynthia Ann Parker, and his mother was kidnapped when she was seven years old by the Comanche, and she wound up marrying the Comanche chief, and she had a son. That was Quanah Parker, and he was the last Comanche chief, and then they they rescued her when she was in her 30s, right. and she kept trying to escape, right. go back to the Comanche. She, was, she had become a Comanche.